Lord, keep me. Lord, 
Lord, give me grace. Lord, give me grace to run this race. To a building not made by hand. I'm just a stranger. I'm just a stranger here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm traveling through this old barren land. This old barren land. Lord, I know there's a building somewhere. Somewhere. A building not made. Keep me yes, amen. day by day. Hallelujah. I feel all right. All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep me Hallelujah. day by day. Day by day. Woo! Yes. I want to live on. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. In a field not made by Hallelujah. They started off this morning talking about God being real. Hallelujah. Loving to praise his name. Because he's on the main line, we ought to be allowed within ourselves to let that light so shine. That they may see your good works. And glorify the Father which is indeed in heaven. All praise to God, our Father, the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. We thank God for the opportunity today. We thank God for our ushers, our musicians, our soloists. Thank God for each and every one of you, our media, those who might be online this morning. We want to go to the last book found in the New Testament. Amen book Revelation. Man, we had some time ago, but God has us to go back again on today. Amen. Revelation chapter 10 and verse 8. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again and said, Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel, which standeth upon the sea, upon the earth. We turn God our Father, we praise you yet again for who you are. We thank you, Lord, for keeping us day by blessed day. We pray now, Father, that as we continue on this road called life, that 
you might continue to teach us what thus saith the Lord. We pray now, Father, for situations, circumstances, and anything that will hinder our hearing, it might be cast away. Pray that you would bless our time, Lord God, as we study your word. Praying, Father, for wisdom, knowledge. Above all, Father, we ask for your understanding. We thank you for who you are. We praise you for all things. In Jesus the Christ's name we pray. Revelation chapter 10, verse 8 says, And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again and said, Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel, which standeth upon the sea, upon. Guess for about five minutes this morning, the little book. I know we don't like reading. Reverend Manley gave me a little book a few minutes ago, and that little book has some things in it to whereas it speaks of the truth of God. The book of illustrations where we see that there is a separation. But don't you know that Genesis, the book of beginnings, is a prelude to the end and prophecy found in the book of Revelation? In other words, the book of Genesis is a preliminary to the actions, the events, the condition, or work of a broader scope of higher importance. In other words, when God made everything starting out in the book of Genesis, everything was good. We get down to Revelation 21 and 22, we're going to find that things were, the things will be just like it was in the beginning. But a book of summation or completion, Genesis starts out where Revelation ends. We see God's perfect, or his perfection rather, in creation, and his perfect per perfection rather, at the end of tribulation. I need to slow down. I, I know y'all ready to go. I know the rain is supposed to be coming, but the word revelation is a translated of the Greek word apocalypse. It means to unveil. It means to uncover. The things which were once concealed are hidden. What I'm trying to say is, is that there is a mystery when it comes to the things of God. It's a mystery to those who are not seeking God. Because the Bible teaches you and I that God, what God desires to teach us all that we might need to know concerning him and concerning us in him. It's a mystery because we fail to get into the word of God. But it says a revelation. It, it's an unveiling, an uncovering. It's a solemn, sacred secret. Once concealed, now revealed. God has revealed to us who he is through his word. There are some things Paul even said, behold, I show you a mystery. We all should not what sleep, but be changed. But the Bible is teaching you and I that, that God, he, he desires to share with us the things that are written in this little book. See, God, God uses John to, to share his redemptive plan that we may gain an understanding of our destiny. Don't you know we're going somewhere? The question is, do you know where you're going? You see, the Revelation is the only prophetic book found in the New Testament, and it presents three major arguments that unveils God's message. John the Apostle, the Revelator, speaks of the things which we have seen. Have you seen God do something in your life? Do you recognize that it is God who is at work to will and to do of his good pleasure concerning you and I? What about the things which are? 
We know that we live in a day and time when, when all kinds of things are going on. And, and we share with the young people this morning uh, during our hour of Sunday school, you know, you, know, you know, the things in which we went through back in the day, I believe it's, 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 it's you know, I know that we said we had it tough, we had it hard, but, but I believe it's harder for the youth of our today. The things which are. We see that in chapters 2 and 3. Things we've seen chapter 1. Chapters 4 through 22, the things in which. Don't you know that God is at work? God is doing some things, and whether we know it or not, God is going to continue to do what God says he's going to do. The Apostle John, the writer of the gospel that bears his name and the, uh, uh, the three general epistles, is the author. It says that while being exiled on the Isle of Patmos, he wrote during the time of Roman hostility, a time when Christians were being persecuted. The Bible talks about the things that used to be. The things which are going on right now. Don't, don't you know that the church is still being persecuted? Don't you know that folk are still coming up against those who profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of their lives? But see, but the book of Revelation uses a various types of imagery, symbols and numbers to paint the perfect picture of God's promises both to the believer and the non-believer. Don't you know that we serve a just God? He's not going to leave anybody out. Symbolically, the number seven refers to God's perfect or his perfection or his completeness. See, John mentioned 21 events and 52 times he mentions the number seven in the book of Revelation. I would, I had time to talk about each of those 21 events and them 52 times that Seven, the number seven is spoken of. But it talks about the seven churches. It talks about the seven spirits. The seven golden stand, uh, candlesticks. The seven stars. And our lesson today, he's talking about the seven seals and the seven horns and the seven eyes and the seven trumpets and the seven thunders. There are many more that. Number seven, but we're going to stop right there. But John's prophecy, his writing is primarily, you know, to reveal the revelation of Jesus Christ and not the revelation of future events. See, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God says in his word, he, he says, I'm the Lord your God and, and I change not. See, God is not going to change but he will change our situation and our circumstances. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 1, the Bible says, The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants that which must shortly come to pass. Don't you know that time is running out? See, see, he sent him and signified by his angel unto his servant, John. But as I hasten to a close this morning, Christ is the mediator whom God sent to reveal to believers the things that will soon take place. I've shared some time ago, Sister Belford, and hope I don't mess it up again like I did last time, but it was talking about this elderly couple. They couldn't sleep, and it says that the grandfather clock, as they heard it chime, it, it chimed 13 times. And they looked at each other and said, what time is it? They said, I don't know, but it's later than it has ever been before. What I'm trying to say is that the book of Revelation, it, 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 it's, it's unveiling, it, 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 it's coming to pass. And, and what we need to know that this little book in which God has given you and I, it has some information that you and I might need to know and understand. 
He says here in chapter 1, verse 3, he says, Blessed is he that readeth. And he that hear the words of this prophecy. And keep those things which are, which are written therein, for the time is at hand. See, time is running out. I know. I know many of our clocks has the Energizer Bunny battery in it. But even the Energizer Bunny, it runs out every now and then. See, it's a blessing to read here and obey God's word. But you and I must get serious because time is indeed running out. I know, you know that there are plenty of people who think they have time. Don't you know that time is of the essence? There's a song that says my time is in God's hand. In that song, it says, if I was in control, Deacon Manley, I would do things so much differently, but do know that my time is in God's hand, and the Bible is saying that time is running out. See, the word of God says, for the time is at hand. As we go home, we need to get it right, and we need to get it right with God, and we need to do it right now. See, remember God's plan for the end of this present age and the establishment of his kingdom, the new Jerusalem, is right before us. Don't you know that at the drop of a hat, we could be in eternity? I used to say eternity is around the corner, but eternity is right in front of us. In the, fifth uh, 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 in, in the fifth chapter of the angel, he sounded um, his, um, let, let me slow down. It's not the fifth chapter. It's the ninth chapter. In the ninth chapter, it opens by saying the fifth angel sounded. It says that a star fell from heaven and was given the key to the bottomless pit. It says smoke came out of the bottomless, bottomless pit, and darkened the sun, the air, and out of the smoke came some locusts. It says that the locust was commanded not to hurt the grass, the trees, or anything green, but those who did not have the seal of God in their foreheads. It says that they were directed not to kill the people but to torment them for five months. Verse 6 says, And then those days shall men seek death and shall not find it, and they shall desire to die, but death is going to flee from them. Don't you know there are some things that's coming? There are some things that God would like for you and I to know that we need to get it right, and we need to do it right now. But it don't stop there. In chapter 9, it says not only that the fifth angel, it says the sixth angel, he sounded off. And the sixth angel in chapter 9, it says that, you know, they, it, it, it says that the same thing that they desired, you know, you know, to, you know it gave a description of, 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 of how, you know, these locusts looked. Looked like a horse and it, Start to describe them, but but you know, but what I'm trying to say is that when that fifth and that sixth angel sounded out, there were some things that God was showing them that God had promised that was going to happen, and it says that death is what they were seeking, but death is not what they was gonna get. At least not right now. What I'm trying to say is this little book has some things that you and I ought to know, come, and understand that God, what God is what? God is, he is what? He is consistent in the things that he say and the things in which he does. See, I wanted to share chapter 9 because as chapter 9 closes, we are informed that those who were not killed by the plagues, they did not repent of their idol worship. They did not repent of murder, fornication, or theft. 
What I'm trying to say is what John is saying is that, 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 that these folk were doing any and every, but they still failed to acknowledge Jesus Christ. I wanted to share that because chapter 10 through chapter 14 is believed to take place in the middle of the seven-year tribulations that Daniel talked about. But it says here in chapter 10 and verse 1, Sister Williams, as I hasten to a close, it says, and I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven. We just saw five and six, and now the seventh angel, he appears clothed with a cloud and a rainbow around his head. His face was as it were the sun and his feet as pillars of fire. Verse 2 says, and he had in his hand a little book. And he set his right foot upon the sea and his left foot upon the earth. And the Bible says in verse 3, he cried out with a loud voice, as when a, as when a lion roeth, and when he cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. This morning in Sunday school, I heard that when the folk were, you know, when the foundation was laid, it, it says folk began to shout, and folk began to cry. It said that the noise was, you know, was so loud, it was, uh, they were unable to, de, you know, to, to, to make a distinction of what was going on. It said that they were rejoicing and they were crying. But it says here that the seventh angel, he sounded the trumpet. The fifth and the sixth angel, they sounded the trumpet. And now when we look at what happened in chapter 9, the Bible says that the seventh angel, when he sounded, the seven thunders roared. And he had a little book in his hand. Look what he says here in verse 4. He says, and when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write. And I heard from heaven saying unto me, seal up those things which we, and write them not. What I'm trying to say is God has been saying some things over and over and over again. This morning during my reflection time, uh, uh, Sister Brooks, I I remember when my mom used to tell me, time is running out. She said, I'm going to tell you one more time. And, I, and when I was looking at this, Deacon Bethel, he tells him, I've said enough. I'm getting ahead of myself. But verse 5, it says, and it says here, and the angel which I saw stand upon the sea, and upon the earth, lift up his hands toward heaven. But we want to jump down to verse number eight. He says, and the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again. He says, go and take the little book. We see that God is still giving instructions. He says, take the little book which is in the hand of the angel which standeth on the sea and upon the earth. In that first part of verse number nine, he says, and I went to the angel and said unto him, give me the little book that I might take it and eat it up. See, I stopped by this morning to tell us the little book was sealed. See, sealed in our lesson refers to stamping with a signal. It's talking about a private mark for security or preservation. Seal is implication means to keep secret or to attest or to close up, to silence or to stop. I just shared verse 4. It says when the seven thunders uttered their voices, I was about to write. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, seal up those things you know, that the seven thunders uttered and write them not. See, God is tired of talking. But don't you know that God don't get tired? But I believe that God has gotten to a point in this lesson to where he says enough is enough. I appreciate what I saw in chapter 9. 
chapter 9 says two angels sounded their trumpet. And it says that God was giving them the opportunity to, to, to turn around, but they didn't repent. So I believe by the time we get to chapter 10, God said, what's the use? I've been talking from generation unto generation, and, and folk don't believe that, that cow horns will hook. Uh, see, when I was growing up on the farm, thinking, uh, Trustee Gibson back in, back in Alabama, that was a saying, you know, when it came to somebody trying to make a point, they would say, you don't believe cow horns will hook. But I believe uh, that they will because I, I saw how somebody, not only by a cow, but I saw what a billy goat would do with his horn. But what I'm trying to say is God, is, God has been revealing some things to us. And don't you know that even at the point of tribulation, folk are still doing what folk want to do? But he says, seal up the little book. There's no need for me to keep on rehearsing things over and over and over again. I don't know, when I was growing up, I used to hear, you working on it. When I look at the first six angels that we find in the book of Revelation, as they sound off, I believe that the heathen, they working on it. They working on that in which they are going to receive from God. But see, not only the little book was sealed, don't you know that the little book was sweet. See, 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 God, you know, God has written out the plans for your life. He has written out the plans for my life, and he has written out the plans for the heathen, and, and don't you know that, that no one is going to escape the wrath of God? And God has given us each and every opportunity that we might go out and tell somebody that Jesus Christ is Lord. And, and that little book that, that I received this morning, that was a gap. That was a division. That was a separation. But as I got to, to the end of that little book, I saw that was a cross that had bridged the gap between this side and the other side. On this side was the person. On that side was God. What I'm trying to say is Jesus Christ dying on the cross, he had, what? he had given us a way that we might be able to get to God. And don't you know that is sweet? See, sweetness refers to producing one of the four basic tastes of sensation, something that's not bitter, sour, or salty. Don't you know that, uh, you know, over there in Psalm 119, it talks about how sweet the word of God is. Don't you know that Jeremiah 15, I believe it is, is talking about how delightful God's word is? The sweet refers to something that's pleasing to the ear. Something that, that sounds delicate. It's pleasant. It's, it's something that's, that we can all agree to. Don't you know that, that sweetness is, it, it, it is something that's, that's delightful, it, it's precious, it's, it's kind, it's, it's gracious, it, it's a person of action, it's easy to manage. Things done are effective without effort. You know, don't you know the Bible teaches us that, that the works of God are not grievous? That's what Paul told that church at Philippi, but, but sweet, it, it expresses approval admiration and satisfaction. See, the book, the, these 66 books that God has given us is sweet. Look what he says here in uh, the A through C section of, of chapter 10. He says, and I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was sweet as honey. Don't you know when we read the word of God and, and we come to know and understand what God is teaching us concerning himself and, and concerning us in him, those who have given you know, our lives to him, don't you know that it is sweet? Jesus is sweet? I know. That sounds like a song. I, I don't know if you ever heard it, but, but, uh, but tea, tea, he is, uh, tea is sweet, I know. 
And see, that's what the Bible is teaching you and I this morning when they talk about this little book being sweet. It's talking about the blessings in which God has it prepared for those who have put their trust in him. Even though he told him not to write anymore, don't you know that God has written enough? That you and I might be able to rejoice knowing that God has every situation and circumstance under his control. And I love the, what we saw in Sunday school this morning. Don't you know that because of rebellion, God had allowed them folk to be captured. They could no longer to worship God. But God gave them the opportunity to go back and build the temple. And it said those folk was praising God. Don't you know you might be going through something? But all you got to do is pick up the word of God. The Bible says David, sometimes he had to encourage himself in the Lord. See, see, the word of God for the believer is sweet. Because it talks about the blessings of God. But see, as I take my seat this morning, this little book was not only sealed. It was not only sweet. It was sour. See, see, see. When I was looking at this, Reverend Manley, you probably had this candy down in, in North Carolina. I know we had it down in, in Alabama. It was called Nine Later. They had this, this Nine Later that was a green one. It was kind of sweet and sour. What's wrong, Deacon Manley? I know in Chicago, y'all, y'all, y'all probably too advanced to have, have Nine Laters. But, but I'm but I talking about something that was sweet and something that was sour. So in other words, he told him in verse 9, he, he, he had already described that, that, you know, go take the book, and when you eat it, it's going to be sweet going down, but by the time it gets to your stomach, it's going to be sour. It's going to be bitter. That, that's what he said. But see, sour refers to having an acid taste resembling that of vinegar or lemon juice. Have you ever drank any vinegar? I know a lot of us put vinegar on our salads. But it says like lemon juice. Something a little tart. But the only thing that came to my mind was, was now latest. And as soon as I get the opportunity, if I see one, I'm going to pick up me a pack of now latest in remembrance of Revelation chapter 10. You know, the, the sweetness of God's word for the believer and the bitterness of the sour is going to be for those who, are, who die without Jesus Christ. But it says in our lesson, sour refers to distasteful. You know, something that's disagreeable, something that's unpleasant, something that becomes strange, something that worsens, something that, that deteriorates. But I'm going to tell you, though, when I eat that nine later, it's going to be bittersweet. Because I, I, I know, I know you, you, you I, do, I know some of y'all, when y'all go to the Chinese restaurant, you get that, that sweet and sour pork or that sweet and sour chicken. What I'm trying to say is, when it comes to the word of God, it's sweet for some folk, and it's going to be sour for others. Look what he says here in verse number 10, as I take my seat. He says, I took the little book out of the angel's hand, and as soon as I had eaten it, it was in my belly bitter. It was bitter. Yes, he said, you know, in other words, he's talking about the non-believer, the one who dies without Jesus Christ. See, God has written those things and, and people have heard and, and people are still rejecting Jesus Christ. But as I go to my seat this morning, the last thing I want to see, say rather, it says even though the little book was sealed, even though it was sweet and sour, its contents must be shared. I don't care what's going on around this world. The word of God still needs to go forth. But I, when I believe what God was telling John, he says you don't need to write anymore. He said that that seven angel will begin, he has spoken, and John was getting ready to write. He said, seal up the book. I believe God has gotten to a point to where it's time for, you know, for, the, for, for him to come back. I don't know when, I don't know where, but I know how. The Bible says that the cloud, you know, that, that he's going to come in on a cloud, going to usher him in, but it says that the, the sky is going to crack open. 
It said that, that there's going to be a trumpet and it's going to be a great thumb. So, so when we look at the book of Revelation, we see that the word of God, even though he said don't write anymore, the Bible is teaching you and I, we still got to go out and tell somebody that Jesus Christ is Lord. See, share means to participate by joining in with others in thought, in feeling, and in action. We said on the 5th, we're going to come together that we might go out and tell somebody that the content, the contents in this little book is still working for the day. Yes, it is. God is still waiting for somebody to give their lives unto him. Don't be like them folk we found over there in chapter 9. It said that the locusts started, you know, just, just, just reaping havoc in their lives for five months, and they still refused to repent of the foolishness that they were doing. But it says share means to give so to others that they might not that they might not lack. It might be food, information, or some other type of intangible. But what the Bible is teaching you and I today is that all we need to do is share Jesus Christ with someone. Jesus does not have to say anything. He said enough. He said, don't keep writing. You, know, you just seal up the book, and I want you to what? To eat the book. So eating the book is for us is that when we, when we, it means that when I read the word of God, I'm ecstatic, I'm excited about what God is doing in my life. But when I think about those who, I don't know who saved, but when I think about those who have not given their lives to Jesus Christ, everything that was sweet, it turned sour. And what I'm trying to say is God is coming back for his church without spot or wrinkle. See, sharing refers to partaking in another one's experience. See, we can experience what we do on our job. We, we can experience those things we did on the playground. We can experience the move of God working in our lives, in the house of God. Not only that, it said that this thing called shared is talking about having some things in common. Don't you know that the commonality that each believer has is Jesus Christ? It's found right here in this little book. In our lesson sharing, it means to join with others to give or to receive by partaking discussions. That, that's what Sunday school is all about. That, that's what Bible study is all about. We're sharing in, uh, in the teachings of God. We're taking on general conversation. We're getting involved with one another that we may gain clarity, that we may gain knowledge, and above all, we might discover the things of God which he gives us his understanding. It means to share, to, is to give or receive or take part of something, to enjoy or to assume that's something we have in common. The believer has Jesus Christ in common. Don't you know the believer has the eternity in heaven in, you know, in common? But don't you know, we have no commonality with those who walk in darkness. The Bible says there's going to be a great gulf fix over there in Luke 16. You know, even if, if you wanted to go back and tell somebody something, you can't go back. They can't come to where you are. You can't go to where they are. I just stopped by to say this afternoon. It says that this little book, it was sealed, it was sweet and sour, and it must be shared. Look what he says here in verse number 11. Even though he said, don't write nothing else. He said, and he said unto me, thou must prophesy again before many people, nations, tongues, and kings. In other words, God has sealed up the book. Everything that he has written for you and I, he has written. And all we have to do is take God at his word. It's going to be sweet for some folk. It's going to be sour for some folk. But we still got to share the good news with somebody else that they might come to know Jesus Christ in the pardon of their sins. I love what the Bible is teaching you and I on this morning. This little book. I know this little book, it has authority. Don't you know this little book, it encourages us. This little book, it has the love of God. You know, in our minds, in our hearts, that we might go out and do everything that he's called you and I to do. This little book is all that we need to get us from what, from, from, from right now and to eternity. What I'm trying to say, God does not need to write anything else. All we got to do is just pick up this little book. There's 66 books, and the Bible is saying there's going to come a day when these folks are going to be asking the rocks to fall on. The rock's going to fall on them 
But guess what? They not going to die. You can't escape, escape the wrath of God. The only one that's going to escape the wrath of God is the one who has given Jesus Christ their heart. It's going to be sweet for us, but it's going to be bitter, sour for somebody else. I'm trying to help me up in here this morning. The Bible is saying even though the book is sealed, it's sweet, it's sour, but it's still got to be shared. The Bible is teaching you and I this morning, this little book that God has given you and I, he's given to us. Guess what? I thank God that I don't have, I'm, not, I'm not in that number that we see over there in chapter number nine. I hear people all the time say, I'm glad to be in the number. I need to start asking folk what number they're glad to be in. But I, want to, I don't want to be in that number. That's what we see in chapter 9. The Bible is teaching you and I that God so loved the world that he thought he got his son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. There might be someone who might want to give their life to Jesus Christ. There might be someone who wants to acknowledge that Jesus Christ is indeed Lord. He has written us. He has written to us given us these 66 books that somebody might come to know Jesus Christ. The Bible says, Jesus says in this little book, he says, I came not into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. He said in this little book, talking about sweet and sour, he said the one who has given his life, the one that believes is not condemned, but here's the sour part, the one who has not is condemned already. We see sweet and sour right there in John 3, 18. But the Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, it says, Thou shalt confess with thy mouth, believe that which is in thine heart, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's the sweetness of God's word. There might be someone that might want to give their lives to Jesus Christ. You can contact us here at New Union BC. Org. If not, just find a church in your local community, one that's teaching from this little book, that you might come to know and understand the sweetness of God's word. We thank God for who God is in our lives, that he might continue. Even though the book has been sealed, we still got to go out and tell somebody that Jesus Christ is indeed Lord. Contact us at newunionbc.org. We'll walk with you. We'll witness to you. We'll worship God together. Keep walking. Keep witnessing. And keep worshiping. I say Jesus the Christ.